Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. What do all these different miscellaneous components have in common? Well, I'm going to tell you in today's video, a cautionary tale if you will. Let's get right into it. So let's back up in time a few days to a nice hot July early evening, still around 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Super strong storms are inbound, full of electricity, full of lightning. You can hear them 15 miles away. You know they're coming. So you go and start shutting off your PV breakers and things as an extra layer of precaution. Even though you got proper surge protection, proper grounding, you think that you'll be fine. But this storm feels different. You've turned this breaker off tens of times in the evenings when those super strong storms around, but this one, you can feel the electricity before it even gets to you. So extra precaution, you go ahead and shut off all your charge controllers just to make sure. Storm's getting closer. You're working in a little power shop on a project. You go ahead and shut everything down and bail for the house. You get to the porch and kicking your boots off and there it comes. It's cracking off lightning everywhere. Before you even get in the door, bam, there it hits somewhere right in the yard. Deafening, rings your ears. You can't hear anything. Strongest lightning and closest lightning you've ever felt in your life. And then your house lights go off. So needless to say, after having all my hair stand up on end and tasting metal in my mouth and ringing my ears and uh, all that good stuff, I wasn't having a good evening. So you take your flashlight and go into your inverter room and check everything out you see. No displays on your batteries. You're like, oh no, what is going on? And then thankfully, after about a minute, the inverter comes back online and your lights come back on in the house. DC overcurrent fault on the inverter. Once it comes back up, still missing some batteries. You only got some batteries on, some are still off. But how did that happen? I had all the PV switches off. I even had the inverter PV input switched off. That's two layers of switches that would have had to jump over. I don't think it came in that way. And I've got line filters on everything. I've got surge protection on the batteries themselves. But from what I observed, the actual closest that the bolt came was to a different array. I'll talk about that in just a second, but that was 150 feet away from where the inverter and stuff is. So but let me show you some other stuff that happened to some components that weren't even connected to anything to show you how strong that lightning was. So interesting things, uh, the next day I went to use this GFCI pigtail. It was sitting in my truck, so you know, not connected to anything, just sitting just like that in the toolbox. And well, it wasn't working anymore. So I guess the pulse took out the circuitry in that GFCI right there. And solar well pump, Chinese solar well pump controller. Well, we all ventured to guess that, you know, that would not take any kind of lightning hit and we would all be correct. This right here did not have any PV leads coming into it at the time. I don't have any PV on this controllers. So I just use a power supply as needed. I maybe run these once a week or whatever to fill up a cistern tank or things like that. So, but the little controller just sitting there with you know nothing on it but the pump leads. So I guess the pump leads were the antenna or maybe not, maybe just the static or the pulse was that strong. It cooked the well pump controller. Of course, it burnt the side of the fed up right there. You can see that where it let smoke out. So uh, try to repair that, probably not. It probably got the traces in the board, really not worth trying to fix that. I'll just get another one. I had some spares, you know, two is one, one is none kind of situation going on right there. And the closest it got was to the array that this midnight solar charge controller was on, a little 400 watt array, uh, short of the diodes out in that array. I'll show you a couple of panels off that array. Now, best I can tell closest to direct hit was a 400 watt array. This is just a couple of panels I got pulled out uh, off of that array. I've got to repair them. I was just doing some testing and checking to see if I could get them back to working. Uh, the panels, you know, short of the diodes out. So I pulled the diode out of a couple of them and just put them out in some, you know, cloudy skies and they're back to making power. Now, whether they'll make full power again or not, that is to be determined. I still have to repair those diodes. And then two out of four terminal block covers were blown off the back of the panels. They were not clipped in anymore. They were laying about 10, 12 feet behind the array where its rack was. So, and some discoloration right there. Now, I don't remember seeing that uh, last time I checked the output on these panels with the little solar meter and stuff, but there is some discoloration now. I don't know if that's from extreme heat or whatever, or if that actually came from the incident. 
as they remember this was turned off completely no power on this unit whatsoever the battery input was off to it the solar input was off to it so i guess the circuitry in this was just sensitive enough to get scrambled so that's trash now that's not doing anything you know i've checked everything all the fuses are good trust me it's it's scrambled it's cooked more interesting things uh battery displays jbd smart battery displays on server rack batteries they're pretty sensitive to uh, induced currents or transients uh lost several of those even some batteries that had no wiring connected to them just sitting in storage uh you know different golf cart batteries and some things like that you know those displays got cooked and one of the more interesting things that wasn't interesting enough you see this board right here that is a 50 amp bms off a 16s lithium iron phosphate battery pack so this battery was in storage along with where some of these batteries were right here just sitting in a little storage building uh you know not connected to anything no wiring to the battery just the battery sitting there you know just sitting there you can see right there that the board is smoked that is the passive balance circuitry for that board right there you can see where it got it so you know no external antenna per se to pick up any you know any extra currents or anything like that so maybe it was just the balancing leads you know were, were long enough for this battery for it to induce a current back to this board and uh you know smoke it uh or just not robust enough so maybe maybe that's what it is maybe the components were not robust uh built enough to handle the induced currents and stuff like that so just letting you know that uh you know even a static battery not connected to anything uh, can still get static and get cooked so quite interesting right there so that's just a small sampling of parts and i've got most of my server racks back up and operational for the house system you know got some displays and stuff replaced and you know they're they're back up so they seem to be okay they're functioning properly at this time I only tripped one battery on the 12 volt rig right here where I'm filming, you know, the 12 volt rig got one battery, it tripped. Uh, all the other batteries were good. And yes, it tripped this battery right here. You would think a big robust battery with a large BMS wouldn't trip. So, you know, the pulse come through and I upset the boards and I was answering some comments the other day from some viewers about the Bluetooth saying, I used to not like Bluetooth, but after the storm having a Bluetooth app, let me go through batteries fairly quickly and do a quick diagnostic to see which batteries had tripped and which ones were still online. So that was pretty nice to be able to see the data on the Bluetooth. And after the storm, you know, I went through checking everything. I did have one outlier where everything was perfectly functional. I hadn't even shut anything off in the system. That was the off-grid RV, which of course is a floating system. Uh, the ground reference for this system is its actual frames. There's no actual connection to earth. I mean, if it was raining three inches like it was, of course we have a water connection, but that's besides the point. I was like, oh no, it, it earth coupled and came through the ground rods. But that was before I went to the storage building to check batteries and found batteries cooked there and stuff like that cooked in a building with nothing connected to it. So I think it was just the electromagnetic field was that strong, basically a miniature electromagnetic pulse. Uh, if you will, you know, came through and got everything. But, uh, you know, as far as distance from where I think the actual discharge of the bolt was, uh, they're about all equidistant away from that point. So I don't think distance had anything to do with it. Maybe because the RV is skinned in, uh, you know, aluminum, maybe. I don't know. So what are the next steps? Well, I thought I'd put all the protection I needed on the house system. So I'm looking at some maybe TVS, some transient motor suppression devices for batteries, for each individual battery. Each server rack battery have its own TVS on there, something like that. And I've talked to a couple of different electronics guys and trying to pick out some parts to maybe harden it up a little bit more. Uh, but then again, a non-hardened system rode through just fine. So maybe just have redundancy. I don't know. But then batteries that are just sitting there can get cooked. So that means I got to put TVS or MOVs. Uh, surge on just batteries that are sitting static. Then again, it could be just due to the robustness of the of the hardware and the boards and things like that. But like I said, I I figured that would go. I didn't figure that would go, and that's supposed to be pretty tough right there. 
Do you have any interesting lightning stories with your solar power, off-grid system, or even your own grid system? You know, lightning is a dangerous thing. It's very powerful. Uh, if you got any stories or anything like that, go ahead and share them in the comment section. Maybe your experiences can help me or someone else, uh, what you've done to remedy it, things like that. I uh, always like to read your comments, interact with you in the comment section. I appreciate each and every one of you. Hope you enjoyed the video today. Thank you for watching. Y'all take care. Please be safe. I'll see you on the next one.